Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Hello everyone, how are you this evening? I hope all is doing good. Running about three minutes behind, sorry about that guys and girls. Oh my. I think it's because I'm out of Dr. Pepper. I'm no pep in the step. <laughs> uh, all right, tonight we are going to be doing part two of our series. I think our series is going to be a four-part series, and I think we're going to end it at part four. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at a couple of um, uh, other additional uh, items that can be found in uh, the kitchen area. Uh, we're going to look at cutting boards. Uh, we're going to talk about inlay cutting boards. We're going to talk about just regular, you know, V-card type cutting boards and things. Um, and then... Uh, we're going to look at uh, a few uh, trivet designs and uh, a pizza platter. Uh, and if you don't know what a pizza platter is, I will be showing you. All right. And uh, so I hope all is doing well. Now, um, in the Facebook group, uh, Butch Elrod asked if I had any pictures of the finished products of the uh, paper towel holders. And as of right now, I do not. But I went out and bought my material uh, a couple days ago and I got my one inch dowels and things like that uh, so I will be making them and uh, I will be posting uh, finished images and stuff in the Facebook group so Butch uh, if you're in class tonight they are coming so I'm gonna try to uh, get caught up on some carvings and things I gotta get uh, uh, I gotta get caught up on carvings plain and simple um, all right, welcome everybody. Welcome. Okay, so in uh, to start off, we're going to be working in the Vetric VCard Pro software tonight, like we always do. Uh, remember, as always, these classes apply to uh, Desktop Pro and Aspire. Uh, everything that we do in here um, can be done in either, any of the three uh, programs. Uh, I just happen to be working in the Vetric VCard Pro. So hopefully you all can hear me well. Hopefully the stream is doing okay. Uh, not a whole lot of buffering. Now in tonight's class, we're not going to be looking at uh, SketchUp or things like that. The 3D renderings and stuff. We're just going to create the projects in the Vetric software and um, uh, go from there. We'll be able to see, get a general idea of the parts and everything. Um, from our 3D previews and stuff. All right, welcome. Thanks for popping in, Les Jerry. Okay, so let's get on over to our Vetric software and get this ball started. Now I am uh, working with a. 750p uh, feed rate, uh, bit rate. Hopefully that will kind of keep the uh, buffering down to a minimum. But also the quality is going to make the words and things just a little bit blurry, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, ever so blurry. Uh, so just try your best uh, to. Uh, I'll, I'll try my best to explain where my mouse is pointing and things. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, so for tonight's project, we're going to start off with um, uh, our cutting boards. And there are really uh, two different kind of cutting boards. One, I kind of, more so than a cutting board, I kind of call it a cheese board because uh, it's got a handle on it. 
the other one would be our uh, block, almost like a, a you know a butcher block type cutting board. And um, depending on how you approach actually making the cutting board, um, I'm going to be showing uh, making one that is basically uh, your panels or what have you, your your boards, uh, edge glued. Uh, so therefore, you're working on like a face grain. But also when we're talking about the inlays and stuff, um, we're going to be base a lot of times those would be done in like an end grain cutting board. Now there are a lot of videos out there on the market uh, on YouTube and everything about how to make a cutting board, you know. And then you know once you uh, cut up all those blocks and, and and everything and glue them together for your end grain cutting board. You could then bring them over to your CNC and do some final touches, such an in, as inlay work and and uh, laser work. If you're going to do some custom carvings like your brand or something, or uh, all on there. Uh, so when when we're working with the inlays, uh, the face grain we'll be able to kind of do here, but also these can be done for in grain cutting boards, which of course would not be cut on the CNC. Those would be all cut and assembled and everything through like a table saw and what have you. Now, uh, for our cutting boards, um, we're going to just start off with a 12 inch by uh, 16 inch and uh, by 3 quarter inch uh, cutting board. And I'm going to be touching off on the material surface and working off the center for the starting point. Now, the project itself um, really doesn't matter as far as what we're about to learn here. Uh, the inlay technique, whether we do a straight inlay or a V-carve inlay, is kind of the, the, the technique that you're going to be picking up on. This can be applied to anything, and in this case, we're applying it to a cutting board. Uh, but first, we're going to look at a very simple... Uh, cutting board that we can uh, lay out relatively easily so bear with me one second while I grab All right, so there's one. Let's see if I can grab that image. I'm going to import a bitmap uh, for tracing and um, just to show kind of a, a general outline for the flat sawn cutting board. So let's go over here and let's zoom down to the letter C. And let's uh, zoom in here. Now we're going to redraw this by hand. I'm just using this as an example. So the first cutting board that we're going to be doing has this kind of uh, rectangular shape. It's got that handle. That's why I kind of call it a cheese board, you know, in a sense, because it's got a handle. But a lot of cutting boards, you know, have those handles as well. But this is going to be our first style. So let's go ahead and delete that. We're not going to use that image. I just wanted to show you the general layout. We're going to start off with the rectangle tool. And for the rectangle, we're going to go with around 11 inches wide by 14 inches tall. Oops, not 14. I'm only got a 12 inch tall board there, Laney Bud. Uh, 11 by 11. <laughs> 
All right. And let's get that centered up. I'm just going to use my left arrow key and I'm going to shift that over to the left. And I believe I want this to be long and narrow. So I'm going to go ahead and go uh, for this. Let's go nine and a half inches wide by 11 inches in length. Uh, let's go 10 inches in length. I want to have a nice sturdy handle on this. Now when you're creating your rectangle, uh, you can use the radius for the corner types and everything in here to kind of create those rounded edges unless you want a square corner. I want, uh, you know, a, you know, somewhat of a rounded edge, but I, I'd like to have probably about a half inch radius on that. And from the center point, let's go ahead and let's get the handle out. I'm drawing another rectangle that's going to have square corners because we're going to end up cutting it off. And then let's get our end part of our handle. And I'm going to end up sizing this after I get it in position. All right, first thing we want to do is we don't want a stiff rectangular handle. We want something with uh, that will give us a nice grip, but we want this rectangle to transition, a nice arc uh, to transition into uh, our corner. And we're going to do that with the fillet tool after we get everything trimmed together. And so the this is just the rough outline. So basically I have two rectangles and I have a circle that have all been uh, laid out in position. Uh, and once we get everything done, might as well do it now. We're going to create a offset using the offset tool guys uh, in the offset and layout. We're going to offset this circle and we're going to offset inward about a half inch. Ooh, let's go bigger. We need to go bigger. Uh, let's double that let's go one inch there we go we're kind of creating that uh, little hanger uh, hole and everything all right using our interactive trim tool our scissor tool let's go ahead and trim away these lines to get our general shape uh, going on here and now as I said we want to kind of radius into this we want a nice rounded edge and that's going to be our fillet tool we're going to get rid of these two inner sharp corners with our fillet tool uh, and we're going to go pretty a pretty good radius probably about an inch and a half uh, one inch to an inch and a half yeah inch and a half is good but I'm a little too fat on the cutting board. I'd like to see it a little bit narrower. Uh, let's see how wide my handle is. I want it to be comfort comfortable to the grip. So let's go ahead and let's get a measurement of our handle width. So I'm going to go with a vertical measurement from this point to here. And yeah, we're about two inches. That's kind of a wide handle. So I'd like to narrow that down. And while I'm doing that, I'd like to narrow the whole thing down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click and put this in transform mode. That way I can grab this upper uh, point here. And I'm going to hold down my shift key so I can bring all of this in together. Go. And that should have brought it down uh, a good distance. Should probably be now around an inch and a half. That's good. You can make it adjust a bit. Now, I would like to have a juice groove in here. 
and um, that juice groove to catch any juices and everything are going to be come right in here and so we're going to go ahead and create a, a rectangle I'm going to get it centered up with my and then I'm just going to use my left arrow key get it generally about where I want it and then if I put it in transform mode and again hold my shift key down I can kind of drag it out to about the size that I want it and that looks good I just need to back it up a little bit so right about there now in the juice groove I do want to have some small radiuses in the corners uh, these are gonna be uh, most likely around the radius of the the bit that I would be using or so but I'm just gonna go with a uh, just a very small quarter inch radius and there we go just to give a little bit of a roundness to it now when it comes to the cutting board anything in here is fair game as far as your design uh, for me I like to do uh, like sayings and things so I'm gonna put some text in here and some people you know they don't want to do a deep V carving uh, for you know they don't want grew you know a big deep car V carving in uh, the middle of their cutting board unless you're gonna fill it with like a food safe epoxy or something to level it back out uh, and uh, you know there's uh, there's a lot of wonderful uh, epoxies out there that are food safe or resins and things that are food safe uh, but for me I'm going to most likely I would either laser engrave this or uh, I would use a shallow flat depth and I would fill do some kind of fill uh, because I don't want um, I, 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 I want somewhat of a you know a nice flat surface in here uh, I could even do inlay you know an inlay design but for right now I want to do some text and for the text I'm going to use the monotype course of a font if I can find it <laughs> there it is all right so happiness is homemade and I want that centered and I want to go with about a let's go with a half inch tall text oops not that small 0.75 let's go three quarters I'll end up sizing this but this is gonna get rotated I want this to be legible when if this were hanging on a wall uh, in, in the kitchen and stuff uh, so I don't want it uh, at this uh, angle here we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees now one of the things that I need to do is center it up and I'm gonna use my juice groove vector as the uh, centering point so with it selected I'm gonna select on that juice groove vector and I'm gonna open up the alignment tool and get aligned to that selection get that centered and then I'm gonna open up my rotate tool and off of its center the center of uh, happiness is homemade uh, off of its center I want to rotate that 90 degrees and um, I don't want it upside down when it's hanging so there we go now I wrote this as a text block and one of the things that you guys uh, and girls might not know is you have the ability to break that text block up into lines if we right click on this selected text I can break the text block into text lines meaning now they're individual lines of text and that's what I want because I want this up towards the top and I want this towards the bottom because we're gonna put a nice little graphic in here uh, let's go into our uh, bitmap layer which is empty good let's go ahead and import another bitmap for tracing this time I'm gonna go into my picture gallery and I should have uh, the image in my 
clip art uh, I do right here. I'm going to trace that out using the black and white trace. I am going to use my corner default uh, for my corner fit and my noise filter to trace that and then I can go ahead and get rid of that image. Now we can get rid of that image one of two ways. We can turn the bitmap layer off or we can just delete the image. I'm going to ungroup that image so I can get rid of uh, any trash or debris and then I want to come back and reselect that Oops. make sure we get everything 100% in that selection box and I'm gonna group it back together your group tools are under edit objects group and ungroup but it's also your keyboard shortcuts are G for group and U for ungroup so I can hit G to group that back together and now I can size that down I do want to get it centered in that rectangle hold my shift key down I select that rectangle open up my alignment tool and align to that selection just like we did the text and get it centered and then I'm ultimately going to rotate that image 90 degrees not mirror rotate our rotate tool is the third icon in the transform objects menu and I'm gonna go negative 90 so it turns the way that I want it to turn there we go and so this would be our very simple uh, design for our, you know, one of many styles of cutting boards. Now this would be uh, a cutting board that would be flat faced as far as uh, our boards if we had to glue our panels together to uh, edge glue them together. We would not be working with ingrain. We would be working with the face grain of uh, the material. And... Um, those are nice a lot of people will do some contrasting woods and designs and things um, and the face grain cutting boards they they tend to all the knife cuts and uh, you know uh, scratches and stuff they, they tend to show uh, and, and uh, more visible uh, that wear and tear more so than in grain cutting boards um, ingrain cutting boards can kind of hide those and all uh, I I like uh, making both styles but my inlay cutting boards uh, that I sell uh, they are ingrained cutting boards and they're when I finish making and gluing up the cutting board it, it then gets brought over to the CNC table I run a face plane a surfacing uh, toolpath to surface off and level off the waste board uh, on both sides uh, down to its finished thickness and then I will go through and start my inlay process now with this we're gonna look at this as a V card but we're also gonna look what if we were to inlay this uh, utilizing the V carve inlay procedure uh, the V carve inlay procedure allows us to work with small areas, tight radiuses, uh, you know, very tight corners and things, uh, versus a traditional inlay, the router bit, if we were doing a straight pocket traditional inlay, when that router bit was to cut out these edges and everything, you would have a radius here, uh, uh, the same radius size of the router bit's diameter. And with a V-carve inlay, we can we can maintain these sharp points. We can maintain these tight radiuses and things. Uh, if you're if you've never seen uh, the steps uh, or any of our classes, any of my classes on V-carve inlaying, you're about to get a course in it right now. But uh, V-carve inlaying is something that was. Uh, uh, developed by Paul Zank and Damien Durant a long, long ba while back ago uh, for the Vetric software. And um, they've got a very nice step-by-step uh, -step PDF available online uh, for a free download. Uh, 
uh, that explains the v-carve inlay process and um, uh, uh, procedures and things you're gonna get a course in it here uh, here in a few seconds and uh, basically it's rinse and repeat doesn't matter what your design is the steps are pretty much always the same so with the first part let's go ahead and look at uh, our cutting this out so we're gonna move over to the toolpath side and let's start with a V carve now with this V carve if I were to V carve this um, if I left it to uh, its own devices to cut to a certain depth uh, we're gonna have some you know uh, wide cuts or deep cuts should I say uh, in the larger parts of the design well we would definitely want to um, fill that gap with with some type of resin or something so we have a nice flat surface to work off of um, <coughs> excuse me we uh, uh, we could if we had a, our laser engraver we could laser engrave the design in for a nice shallow cut and things uh, that would work uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at the v-carve inlay procedure uh, with this so that way we have two contrasting uh, you know wood species uh, very nice pop to it and of course you know your imagery if any you know you don't have to you could just have a very classic outline with a juice groove or without a juice groove you know you can have a platter and all um, but this is just up to your own imagination you know what would you like to see uh, for the most part cutting boards are utilitarian tools you know they're going to be used in uh, the um, in the kitchen but also they're utilized for decoration as well you know a lot of people will buy them especially these style and all to hang up on the wall just to kind of decorate and so do you want it to be a decorative item you know a crafty decorative item or do you want it to be a you know an item that can be utilized and put together so that's what you want to kind of look at so what we're going to start off with is our v carve uh, right now i'm going to uh, go no flat depth with my 60 degree v bit and when we calculate this we'll have our you know our v carve cut let me turn off the color now on this particular cut in the deepest area here if i move my mouse into the cut we can look at the very bottom right of the screen and you can see right now the top of the board is Z0 where we're going to be zeroing out but as we move into the cuts you can see that cut depth so uh, maximum cut depth here is around a little over a quarter of an inch about 0 0.29 0 0.3 and everything so 2948 uh, so that's a quarter inch deep cut we would definitely want to do some type of you know uh, fill on that because of course we don't want bits of cheese or veggies or whatever it is going to be cut on this getting down in there and uh so we could limit the flat depth make it a very shallow cut uh that way it has a flat bottom we could do that uh but still we we want to have some kind of smooth surface we, we're going to have to do some type of fill eco epoxy uh eco epoxy or uh you know there's a lot of different food safe food safe very important epoxies resins and if I'm not mistaken it's somebody that uh, has been out there for a while uh, if you know the answer to this and uh, you can answer I believe don't quote me somebody correct me if I'm wrong that certain epoxies uh, once they're fully cured fully cured are food safe I will have to research that I think I heard that rumor a while back ago I don't know if it's true uh, I tend to use uh, uh, epoxies that are that are food safe but I heard someone say or I think as someone was telling me that uh, like general epoxies or something uh, if they're fully cured they are food safe uh, if you know the answer to that if that is a true or fact false uh, true or false uh, fact fun fact let me know um all right so let's talk about our juice groove now typically the juice groove is cut with a box core bit box core router bit 
and um, it is uh, in very much ways similar to a ball nose. Uh, some manufacturer will call them round nose bits. Uh, I know them as box core bits. If I were to pull up a web page of a box core router bit, okay, that would be uh, let's see if I can grab a small image of one. All right. So a box core bit has that nice rounded edge. Uh, these are the bits I tend to use with my marble games. Uh, when I, you know, my marble mazes and things like that, uh, they create that nice rounded uh, box core bottom. Now you can use your ball nose bits, you know, uh, your ball nose uh, router bits. A lot of people refer to them as round nose as well. Uh, I, you know, I know them as box core, box core. Um, and so the box core bit that I'm going to be utilizing for my juice groove has a 3 8 inch diameter. So we need, this is a form tool that has to be drawn. This is a form tool that has to be drawn uh, 3 8 inch uh, yeah, overall diameter. Uh, but this is a, a bit that has to be drawn to be added to the tool database. So we're going to do that. I believe I have one in my tool database, but for those of you that may not and you want to run down to Lowe's or Home Depot or you know Amazon, wherever you want to get one and order one, you need to know how to add it to your tool database. So I'm going to open up a, a circle tool here and my overall diameter is going to be 3 8 of an inch. And um, from here, when you are adding a form tool to your tool database, you only need the lower right corner, you know, the right edge of that profile. So I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to cut my vector here and then at this center point. That will allow me to delete this so I have that lower right profile. Now with that profile selected I'm going to go into my tool database. It needs to be selected before I open my tool database and the I'm going to click new over in the tool type. I'm going to choose form tool and it's going to create that 3 8 inch diameter box core bit for me. Uh, my pass depth, I'm going to go a 16th of an inch. Uh, I'm going to step over 33 and a third. That is correct. And 60 and 15 is also correct. It is probably pulling that information from uh, my other box core bit that I would have in here. So, yep, my uh, box core bit there. So, good. We'll click apply to lock that in. We're going to call this our box core bit. Click apply and click OK. Now that that is in my tool database, I can go ahead and create my profile cut. Anytime you're following a single line or a line, whether you're cutting on the line, on the outside of the line, or the inside of the line, that is a profile toolpath. And um, I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch deep with my juice groove. You may want it. Uh, a little deeper to pull those juices and things away from your foods and stuff. Um, I'll go 0.15. Uh, 
I do want to use that box core bit and I do want to be on the line on the line for the machining vectors I'm gonna calculate that tool path okay to create that juice groove and then finally we're going to do not finally we got one more we're gonna do our drilling or this is actually going to be a pocket uh, tool path here because I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill but the diameter of this hole is bigger than a quarter of an inch so I would not use a drilling operation or else I would end up with just a quarter inch hole I want to use a pocket tool path so we're going to go into the pocket tool path we're going to cut all the way through the material I am going to be using my quarter inch end mill, in this case my white side 705 bit set quarter inch end mill. And I'm going to calculate that tool path. And now finally, we're going to create our profile cut. Now for the profile cut, I'm going to uh, create it without the tabs and then I'm gonna go back and add the tabs here in just a moment but let's do it without the tabs first uh, that way I'm using a quarter inch end mill that way we can cut away the waste material so we can see the finished piece now two things that I'm going to change with this um, I just want to you know kinda of show you the overall finished piece let's see if I can spin it around here two things that I would like to do to this number one I would like to round over the edges of my profile cut using my small eighth inch round over I could very easily take this piece over to my router table and run it very quickly along my round over bit in my router table but I can also create that tool path using my uh, round over bit in my um, CNC and so the one thing that uh, I want to do there's a couple of adjustments that I want to make uh, first thing is in my fillet tool I am going to create a eighth inch radius on these two sharp points here here and here just to give that nice rounded flow instead of a sharp corner there I'm going to go back into that profile cut and I am going to add tabs to this cut when I edit those tabs I'm going to throw a tab here 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 and here and one set on the neck I try to stay away from rounded corners and inside corners I don't want to be sanding those areas and things uh, losing my profile so we're gonna click OK and this is going to be our final cutout with my quarter inch end mill EM <clears throat> All right, now, like I said, I'd like to do a round over tool path, so that will be a profile cut. Now, my round over bit is going to be the white side 2050 round over bit, and um, that bit uh, has an eighth inch radius and um, it has an eighth inch radius which also has an eighth inch step over um, and uh, pass depth from the bottom of the bit to the bottom of the or the top of that round over should I say is a quarter inch now if you are not going to create a relief cut with your end mill if you're going to be plunging this straight down then you don't want to take the full plunge you know the full quarter inch plunge do it in steps you know I would probably break this up into two uh, cuts eighth inch and eighth inch um, if I had a relief cut where my end mill came and kind of cleared some of the area away then I would take that full plunge up to you 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up for where it's taking passes to make its own groove because it, it does have a cutting blade at the bottom of the bit. It is plungeable, uh, so it will cut as it's plunging down. Um, I do want to make sure my plunge rate is about 15. Uh, it, I want to give it time uh, for it to remove that material on that plunge. So we'll go ahead and uh, click apply to save that eighth inch change. And I do want to come in and I've already chosen it, wonderful. All right, for this cut, it's only gonna be a cut depth of a quarter of an inch, making two passes. I am going to be cutting on the outside of the line, but I want to offset, offset, a negative eighth of an inch. I want that round over to come in an eighth of an inch from the line so it rounds over that edge. I don't want the right side of the bit. I don't want the right side of the bit, or I'm sorry, the left side, because uh, I'm doing a um, climb cut. I don't want the left side of that bit just running on the edge. I want to move in an eighth of an inch. So the edge of my board is running along the inside of this round over to round over that edge. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and calculate that toolpath. And so let's go ahead and take a look at all the toolpaths for this. We're going to have our V cut, our juice groove, our, oops, profile cut is not first. <laughs> let's do the round over. There we go. Let's move that round over up in the proper order. The final profile cut should be final. Uh, not not before the round over uh, but uh, you know it gives that nice round over edge and everything uh, just gives that nice smooth transition nice and soft on the hands of course on the bottom side we would you know uh, use some sandpaper to break those sharp edges make it comfortable to the grip uh, but we've got that groove all right now let's look at if we were going to approach this in a V carve inlay method and we have our design now there are two ways to look at this because you're going to be cutting this part out um, of a contrasting piece of material uh, to create that inlay and so that's going to be a separate piece of material and I do not need to cut out my inlay out of a 16 by 12 inch piece of material. I would probably cut my inlay out uh, out of a piece of material which is around the same size as where this juice groove edge which is an eight by six. Um, so however I lay this out, I've got to be aware of my orientation. So if I do cut this out of a eight by six, um, I want to create this on a different layer. I do not want to create the, the inlay toolpath here because then I'll be working off the center of my 16 by 12 inch piece. I wouldn't be working off the center of my eight by six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it to a new layer and I'm gonna call this my Mel V-Carve Inlay. And I'll give it a color of maroon. I don't need it visible right now. And what that will allow me to do is I want to hide all of this for right now and I want to open up that inlay and I want to center it on this material because I'm using the same board instead of creating a separate program you know a separate V card program I'm using kind of the same layout but as long as I'm starting from the center it doesn't matter if I'm starting from the center of this 8 by 6 area or if I'm starting from the center of this 16 by 12 area center center right so when I create this toolpath here, it's going to be based on 
this small area here so I would have my board clamped on my table my 8x6 board orientated along the x-axis the way it uh, is running here and I would be doing my inlay now all all of this material is getting milled away when we do our v-carve inlay so we may want to think about how we would clamp and where our clamps would go on this piece of material so we could uh, offset this a little bit so if I offset this outward an inch that's fine oops always make sure that you're working in the appropriate layer make sure that layer is active or else you'll see what had that happen what just happened it copied that into my layer one and it turned my layer one back on so make sure your layer that you're working in is active and one more time we're gonna go ahead and offset that outward and it doesn't have to be an inch let's go let's go because you don't really need a whole lot of clamp on there let's go a half inch uh, create sharp corners it didn't work because it's already rounded corners all right so now I have a place out here to put my clamps because all of this material here is going to be milled away when I do the male part of the v-car now one of the major things that we need to understand about the male cut on the inlay is it needs to be mirrored if I were to cut it right now just like this it would not work uh, it's got to be flipped and mirrored so we're gonna go into the mirror tool we're not going to create a mirror copy we are going to flip it about the job center because I'm centered and we're going to flip it vertically okay so it's going to be mirrored and that way when these two pieces this piece here and this piece here let's uh What am I trying to demonstrate here? Bear with me a second. My control key. All right. We'd have our female in here with, you know, our, you know, our V cuts and things, whatever our design is, they would be carved down. Well, in the male, it's going to be carved up. And so when those two, in <laughs> those, those, here, let's do this just so it matches let's take this and make a copy of it and let's mirror that oh not about job center let's just flip it there we go when that part is cut it's going to have that um, male part that's going to fit in the female. So if I were to rotate this, oh, I keep grabbing that mirror tool, then my rotate tool, and I pivot off of this lower corner here, and I rotate this piece up 90 degrees. Let's take this part and move it out. And I rotate this part off of this corner I gotta mirror my whole project bear with me a second gotta mirror it gotta mirror it gotta mirror it oh you son of a gun stand by a moment on group on group on group that's a terrible that's a terrible demonstration if I can't <laughs> I mean, he didn't mirror it right uh, that needs to be flipped vertically there we go and let's get those two parts fitting there together my rotate is off so you get the idea anyhow um, when those two parts come together 
you know, to create that inlay, we want them to fit together. So we have to mirror the mill. And that was a terrible <laughs> illustration, but you get the idea, hopefully. Tell me if you don't. I'll, uh, I'll redraw it more better. So we have to mirror this design uh, because all of this is going to be raised up. It's going to be fitting into the V-carve pocket of the female piece. So here's our, here's our inlay procedure. For the female, we're going to just select the actual vectors that we're V-carving. Our start depth is going to be zero, and our flat depth is going to be 0.2. Okay, uh, you you know some people like to go 0 0.3. In uh, Paul Zank and Damian Durant's uh, illustration, they talk about 0.3 uh, as well. Um, but uh, for me, I V carve at a 0.2 depth. Now. I'm going to uh, not use any flat area clearance tools. It's just going to be a straight V bit V carve to that point to depth. And the uh, when I calculate this tool path, that's going to create my female pocket. Okay, it's going to create my female pocket. Now for the male, let's turn this layer off. For the male we use the actual border and our objects that border that surrounds our design is what give us gives us that reversed effect it gives us that raised effect and on this when we v carve we actually have a start depth of 0.1 and a flat depth of 0.1 these two added together total the point to depth that we created the female in. So I'm starting at point one and cutting down to point one. I'm just going to let my V bit do this because again, all of this material is going to end up getting cut away when we use our bandsaw or our CNC to face plane it off. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could use a flat end mill, but it's 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 really not necessary. Don't because all that's going to be gone. So I'm just going to let my V bit cut this, and I'm going to calculate this toolpath. So now when we calculate this toolpath, We end up with the male version of that cut, and we would end up cutting all of the edges away. So let's do a profile cut, cut all those edges away, just so we can simulate that. Uh, let's go. Oops, bear with me a momento. I gotta go inward just a little bit. Offset inward, uh, eighth of an inch. Oh, dadgummit. Always make sure that layer you're working in is active. I keep, I got a bad habit about that. That's a terrible habit as an instructor to be able to do that. All right, make sure that layer is active and we're gonna offset this inward just a small amount because I'm gonna be doing my profile cut on this uh, so it, it gets rid of that. If you look at my 3D view here, you see that lip all the way around. We're not gonna have that lip in there. So let's calculate that and cut that out.
Okay. So we would end up with a piece that looks something like this. And this part would then be glued, uh, add glue around uh, here as well as in your female pocket. And uh, it would be inserted into that inlay and it'll kind of snap right in. Uh, they lock together very well. It'll be clamped, let it uh, give it time to cure, and then we would take the cutting board and set it up on the CNC and we would mill off this top surface to the top of our cutting board. Um, or we could take it over if we had a bandsaw, we could take it over and uh, separate the two parts because when these parts are assembled together, let me get rid of this damn round corners. There we go. Excuse my French. When those parts are assembled together, there is a small gap uh, between them. Uh, wide enough to get a saw between, you know, if you were bandsawing to separate them. Uh, or if you didn't want to do that, then you could take and um, set them up on your CNC table and you could have your CNC mill away the top surface until it's gone. and then do some finish sanding to finalize to the um, you know you don't want to mill all the way to the top of your cutting board you want to leave some room uh, there and you will finish sand that nice and flush cleaning up all the edges and things uh, any glue squeeze out that might occur or anything like that uh, for me uh, it's kind of six one half does another sometimes I take them over to my bandsaw and separate the parts Sometimes I just throw them right up on uh, my uh, CNC and run a face planing operation, which is essentially a pocket cut uh, to uh, face plane that down uh, to just about right above my cutting board uh, surface. And then I will do some finished hand sanding uh, to level it out. But a V-carved toolpath, you mirror the design on that mill, you use a boundary to create that raised effect. On the female, you do not use the boundary. And your cuts, the female pocket starts at zero, cut depth of 0.2 for the female cut. And for the male, 0.1 start depth, 0.1 cut depth, flat depth. That number for any type of V-carve inlay remains the same. Now, you can have it vary. Uh, what if I wanted a little bit more depth and definition or what have you? I could have this uh, female cut to uh, you know, 0.4 inches deep, uh, 0.3 inches deep, whatever the case may be. But no matter what depth that I cut it at, I need to make sure that my two points match so I would probably most likely start at a 0.1 if I was cutting, let's say, 0.3 inches deep, and my cut depth would be 0.2. Uh, these two numbers add up to 0.3. They have to add up to your cut depth of your female. Okay? Whatever you would want to do. Yes, Robert uh, Probert says, uh, could uh, you run it through a planer? Well, here's the thing. On your face grain... Face grain inlay, or you know, uh, your face grain cuts and stuff like that. Yes, you can run it through a planer. I do not recommend running in grain through a planer. Uh, that uh, you have the planer is a very aggressive. It has a tendency to chunk and cut uh, and tear out that in grain. You know, just kind of just rip off chunks and things. Uh, a face face surface, you know, face. Um, grain board just a regular board yeah you can run it through the planer uh, but I do not recommend an end grain cutting board going through the planer 
if you were to run an in grain cutting board through the planer then you need to have a scrap piece of wood uh, going through the planer uh, in front of your cutting board uh, it needs to feed through the planer then your cutting board directly behind it and right behind that a a scrap piece of wood behind the cutting board that way any snipe or anything is going to be on those two waste boards that are passing through the leader board and the uh, following board uh, and uh, that will help reduce some of the tear out and uh, chunking that you would get on an in grain cutting board uh, but again um, I, I just surface plane a cutting board. I don't. I, I wouldn't run it through a planer on an in grain cutting board. But your face grain all day long, you can run it through a planer. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So, um, you know, you can do that. Now, uh, Dennis says that he tends for his juice grooves. I'm assuming that's because Dennis. That comment was probably back about the juice grooves. That he tends to use a bowl bit. For his juice grooves and things, um, which is uh, you know absolutely uh, doable. Just depends on the diameter of the bowl bit and the type of juice groove you run. I you know, and it does. It comes down to preference. I, the box core bit. Oh gosh, I got those hiccups. Sorry, guys. Um, that uh, box core bit for the juice groove. I just like the round bottom. You know, uh, it's the same bit that I use with my marble mazes and things, so my marbles can roll around and stuff. I like that round bottom. With your bowl bit, uh, your bowl bit, you're going to have that rounded curve and then a kind of a flat bottom. So either one. Heck, your ball nose bits, your eighth inch and quarter inch ball nose bits, you could use those, you know, and do a pocket cut. Uh, you would go between two lines, of course. Um, and uh, it wouldn't be a profile like this one uh, but you could do that and it would just have kind of a almost a semi flat bottom with two radius corners so you can use those those bits as well you can use an end mill uh, I don't like an end mill because I don't like the square bottom and sides I like kind of that round smooth groove and things all right all right, so very basic, very basic, simple uh, cutting board uh, with a handle. Uh, we're going to take all of this and we're going to move it to a new layer. <clears throat> uh, if I can learn how to turn my cap locks off. And I'm going to make that layer invisible right now okay now with your butcher block style cutting boards uh, for them I you know I typically have my cutting board let me get this uh, sized and center it up Now, there's two things that happen with my uh, ingrain cutting boards that don't have a handle, my square butcher block style cutting boards. One is there usually is some type of inlay design. Um, two is on the back side, the bottom side, I have handles uh, that get pocket cuts that get cut to, with the handles and things. But the particular design I'm going to show you today is kind of uh, unique and it's really neat um, we're going to do a cutting board let me see if I can draw this out like if we were looking at it from a side view so uh, we would have our cutting board let's move that over a little bit and on that cutting board we're gonna be cutting it basically kind of upside down we're going to be creating a oh what would be the best way to demonstrate this um, let me see if I can we're gonna be cutting a pocket 
and it's going to look a little nicer than this but we're going to be cut a pocket out of the end of uh, this so this way when it is flipped upright we have this little uh, opening underneath now it's only going to be open in the middle not on the sides you wouldn't be able to see this groove from the sides but what this opening allows for is for our dinnerware our platter uh, whatever it may be uh, let me see if I can you know it's going to be able to slide up underneath uh, so that when we are uh, cutting off cuts and all they can get scraped uh, right off the cutting board onto our plate so it's going to have a plate pocket in a sense uh, on the bottom side of it and uh, so how we would draw this is on my cutting board a typical dinnerware platter uh, you know whether it be a nine inch dish you know whatever inch dish I, you know we want to figure out what our maximum dish size would be uh, and uh, let's go with a nine inch uh, dinner plate okay and I want the dinner plate to be able to slide at least halfway underneath uh, of this now I'm going to offset this circle inward about an inch so I'm gonna offset inward about one inch okay and for that that is going to be uh, where the top for the top of my cutting board it's going to come out here but I'm going to have another pocket cut uh, below that to where uh, the plate can slide under and be about halfway under so let me let me see if I can make this uh, very clear uh, let's go ahead and create the tool pass let's get let's get things cleaned up first uh, first thing I want to do is use my trim tool and trim that away here uh, and I when my plate uh, slides in here I don't want it to be a tight fit I don't want to sit there and be trying to force the plate underneath so I need to offset this outward now a little bit to give me some room uh, and it's only gonna probably be you know an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch you know just give yourself a little bit of room so it's not so tight in there um, oops I went inward I supposed to go outward uh, just a nice little room here and that way uh, I can uh, now uh, let's go with my trim tool get rid of that circle there for a moment and I am going to uh, let's move the plate I'll draw the plate back in there in a moment we'll get rid of it uh, so that way we can see what in the world's going on here so right now I have an open vector and I need to close it off uh, and and everything so what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this uh, the cutting board outward about an eighth of an inch this is going to represent my uh, my offset allowance for my bit to be able to cut beyond its, its vector so I'm going to offset this outward by about an eighth of an inch and that way I can take my extend tool and extend this vector out to here okay over here extend this vector out to there oops there we go and I've got two tool paths that are happening here one uh, is uh, this profile shape but two is going to be my pocket cut as well so this is going to be end up being my pocket cut so I need to trim this outside vector away leaving only 
this little pocket area right here. So we would be cutting this cutting board upside down because we're cutting from the bottom, you know, to the top. And so the first thing is going to be our pocket cut. Now I'm going to I don't have none of these toolpaths, any of these toolpaths uh, named, but just keep bearing with me that these are all that was the just kind of off the V-carve inlays and all that. So from this point on, I'll start naming the uh, these toolpaths so you so you know like holy cow, what are all those toolpaths for? You know, we're working on multiple projects in the same project, so we've got you know multiple toolpaths. This is not how you would set it up. Uh, just like uh, if you saw in the Facebook group. I, we did in the class we we taught on the same drawing area you know our same drawing area we, we taught the class but when I sent you the files I sent you three separate files for three separate projects um, and that's what I would do here when I send these files out you're getting different separate files for the different projects but right now I'm creating them all in one so don't let all of these tool paths over here confuse you okay all right, so our first cut is going to be our pocket cut. Now, on the pocket cut, and this, uh, by the way, uh, we're going to change our board thickness. Uh, this is typically going to be an inch and a half thick. Inch and a half thick. One and a half to two inches thick. Okay? What a nice inch and a half thick uh, piece of material. All right, so um, with this, for our pocket cut, we're going to cut down and on this inch and a half thick I would like to have uh, about at least a quarter inch maybe a half inch of material on the face the top of this I don't want a very brittle lip that's hanging over and things and you'll see this when I when we do the actual 3d view um, but uh, I need to make a big enough pocket for my platter my plate to sit uh, you know underneath and a typical plate uh, from like you know sitting on the table upward I would say uh, it's no taller than three quarters of an inch right so uh, we're gonna have plenty of room but my cut depth on this pocket uh, is going to be my thickness of my material minus the amount of material that I would like to have left I want to show you how to do this equation okay so I know what I want my finished depth to be or my finished thickness or uh, you know my lip to be so if I type in for the cut depth if I type in the letter T which stands for the thickness of my material inch and a half T minus point uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with a 375 uh, lip 0.375 and hit equal that will give me my cut depth for this pocket okay so I'm gonna be cutting an inch and eight so the thickness of my material minus how much material I want remaining after this pocket cut is cut equals and it's that inch and an eighth for my cut depth okay so just a little equation that you can use so I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill for this. Uh, my quarter inch end mill is taking shallow passes, uh, eighth of an inch uh, at a cut, half its diameter. So it will be doing it in nine passes. I'm going to let it do it in nine passes. I'm not going to be aggressive with it because I'm using a hardwood for this. I'm usually, you know, uh, whether it be you know walnut, purple heart, zebra wood, you know, something, whatever my cutting board happens to be at that time. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, calculate that toolpath. And we're going to preview that selected toolpath. Okay. And now we're going to do our actual profile cut you know cutting out this profile um, and 
generally on this my cutting board is pretty much cut to size uh, I usually wouldn't profile cut the whole cutting board I would just cut out this area here so um, if I were doing that then let me show you how I would set up my vectors um, let's go ahead and let me show you how I would set up my vectors for that <clears throat> Let's go ahead and put this on a new layer, this uh, pocket cut. Let's move that over to a new layer so we can get it out of our way. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to offset it outward, that eighth of an inch. And I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to cut my vector here and cut my vector down here at those two corners. That way I can extend that line out there. And there. And I can uh, come in here and go into node editing mode, cut the vector here, and cut the vector here on these straight points. So that way all of this offset area, all of this area here can get deleted. And my vector, this guy right here, can get closed or joined, joined with a straight line. So that'll create this area here. Okay? That'll create this vector here. And I would run a profile toolpath. I would be inside the line, inside the line and uh, using not my round over tool, which would be nice. We could do a nice little round over in there, but I'll leave it a square edge right now, but I would be using my quarter inch end mill and we would calculate uh, that toolpath. Now, um, this pocket is already cut out, you know, around here. I got a big cavern already cut out. So there's absolutely no sense <coughs> in me starting <clears throat> And me starting at zero and cutting to you know my inch and a half depth because already an inch and an eighth of it has already been cut okay so I can start at that one and an eighth inch deep cut and cut that final 3.375 that final three eighths for a total of an inch and a half okay and I can preview that toolpath and that will allow me to delete this piece of waste material right here by double clicking on it. Now notice that I still got this lip right here, right? I still got this lip right here. Well I need that to go beyond so we need to take this and I'm going to go into node editing. I don't want my arc to change. I just want my vectors, these two guys here, this one and this one. If I hold down my shift key, select them. Now I can use my right arrow key and get past my my board because my board is, you know, out here. So, we're going to recalculate that toolpath. There we go. Now, notice my pocket cut. My pocket cut left those little lips there. Well, my plate can't fit in with those little lips. So we actually need to come in here and turn that uh, vector back on for a moment. And again, I do not want my radius to change. 
So I'm going to go into node editing mode. Node editing mode. And these points here, I'm just going to extend. Oops, I don't want my radius to change. Hold on a second. My radius is changing. I'm going to grab just these two points right here. There we go. Just all I got to do is extend past the board. Up here, these two guys right here. Just extending past that board. I'm going to recalculate that pocket cut. So it will now remove away those two pieces. So now there are different uh, ways to approach this. Let me get this into a lighter piece of material uh, so you guys can see it a little better. I don't know how the lighting is on your end. But it's shaded real dark because this is actually the bottom. You know, it's the top of our cutting board, but it's the bottom in this this view. If I were to uh, if I were to switch to a two-sided uh, view, we can get it lightened up. So bear with me a second. Um, Let me preview these two tool paths again. Now when it's doing, when that on that profile cut, cutting that little uh, half moon out, uh, not this pocket cut here, but the profile cut, um, my bit is running along the edge. It's taking a very small bite uh, on the side here and so me starting at that inch and an eighth um, I'm not removing a lot of material so I don't mind if it comes down and removes that because it's only cutting on maybe a third of the bit but if you wanted to and you didn't feel comfortable with that you could start at zero and cut down your inch and a half either way um, either way you wanted to do that's uh, that's up to you and so if I come in here and get rid of my waste material oh Lord have mercy Well, now it's not letting me get rid of my waste material. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh, I hate when I try to be smart. All right, let's go back into a single-sided environment. Pain on my butt. All right, let's preview those two cuts one more time. The, uh, for some reason, it wouldn't let me delete my waste material, which is fine. It's just going to be dark when we're looking at the top side. <clears throat> there we go. All right. So, you know, on my cutting board, now I have a place where I can slide my plate underneath. As I'm cutting, I can scrape those uh, chopped uh, vegetables, fruits, whatever, onto my plate. Uh, you know, for whether it be my serving platter or my prep platter what have you uh, and so we have a very cool plot cutting board now you can also I've seen uh, uh, designs like this that have two layers um, where there's actually a lip in here um, that I'm not sure what that would be for a low profile plate to be able to slide in further and then a higher profile plate maybe like a, a bowl or something to slide in to a certain point and it's kind of like a stop block basically that only lets it go to where it's halfway on uh, there's a lot of different things but this uh, platter cutting board and now from here 
um, we can do whatever we want to do with our design if any you know it could be just this you know it could just be this cutting board it's just a nice it's a really nice cutting board where you can slide your plate under chop up your vegetables your fruit scrape it off onto the plate you know done uh, type of deal um, and um, it doesn't have to be there there doesn't have to be anything fancy on here and everything uh, but my plain cutting boards that would be like that they would be less expensive than my inlay cutting boards so my plain cutting boards might be attractive to some people at the farmers market and stuff uh, but some people that don't mind paying a little extra money uh, will um, you know would appreciate you know whatever design you know is cutting in there and if you ever want any inspiration on inlay cutting boards on YouTube there's a master of cutting boards out there that goes by the name of MTM Wood. MTM Wood. Check out some of his inlay cutting boards. Beautiful. Uh, he uses he utilizes the Vetric software to create his. But wow, does he have some skill when it comes to his inlay cutting boards, ingrain cutting boards. Uh, if you're ever curious, MTM Wood. Uh, super 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 sexy cutting boards they're just they're very nice and um, uh, can really make you think wow I can do that with VCAR <laughs> yes you can it all depends on how you set it up um, but my uh, you know this uh, platter cutting board very simple simplistic in design whatever you wanted to have in here you could do um, I would still uh, tend to have a, a juice groove uh, to uh, capture the juices uh, so the juices aren't running onto the platter or the plate uh, unless I'm using it uh, you know cut uh, uh, dry vegetables or things you know uh, celery asparagus cucumbers things like that which still have juices you know what I mean but it's not like really juicy um if i were uh creating a juice groove for this i would essentially uh select these two items here and i would copy them and then turn around and paste them and then i would weld them while they're still selected and let's make sure that welded correctly. Did it? Did it? Did it? Did it? No, it didn't. Control Z. Um, now they're already together. Uh, so I would offset those inward a good, uh, good quarter of an inch or so, quarter inch or half inch, because I'm working with a three-eighths inch box core bit. So at least uh, at least uh, three sixteenths or more. So uh, I'd probably go about maybe 0 0.375 inward, and now let me use my scissors. This one needs to be offset outward. Outward. Now I can take these two parts here, those two parts there, and weld them together. Oh, you son of a gun. It keeps wanting to weld on the back side. All right. Not weld. We'll trim. We'll trim. Like, holy cow, what are all those vectors? And this toolpath here, my juice groove, I usually wouldn't have it run down uh, that deep into my cutting board, right? I would probably have it up here a little bit, uh, and I wouldn't have it this close to the edge, so we'll offset that in some more. Let's go a full uh, one inch offset inward. There we go. And on these sharp corners here uh, I know darn well my router bits not going to be able to uh, get in there so I'm going to put in a 
uh, eighth of an inch radius. Well, no, th um, three sixteenths because I'm using my box core bit. Is that gonna let me do it with my normal fillet? Might not. Might be too tight. There, yeah, there it is. Not the same. And so that would be my juice groove, and that would be a pocket tool path, cutting a you know whatever depth that you want using our box core bit did I say pocket ignore what I just said ignore everything I just said that is a profile toolpath ladies and gentlemen a profile toolpath jeez Louise get you guys really confused profile toolpath we're gonna be on the line And of course, you're not going to see the juice groove because guess where it's at? It's on the bottom. <laughs> it's on the bottom. Uh, but of course, you would have your board, you know, flipped upright, and you'd cut your juice groove on the top. Uh, but you know, if we had to visualize, that's what your juice groove would look like. <laughs> oh, this is why I love two-sided jobs. I wish I'd have set this up as a two-sided job to begin with. Um, because we are cutting two sides, uh, our top and our bottom. Oh my goodness. All right. So before we get into the pizza platter, this is the one I'm really looking forward to doing is, is showing you guys the pizza platter and all, uh, before we get into there, uh, cutting boards is very straightforward. There is no tip or trick about it. You know, uh, this platter board, I, uh, there's a name for it. There's a name for it. Uh, but where you can have that plate slide underneath, uh, very nice design. Very popular uh, for me uh, when, when selling. Uh, plain boards are less expensive than inlay or decorated, you know, uh, uh, resin boards, you know, epoxy boards and things. Um, but. A cutting board whether it be flat sawn or in grain again if you're looking at want to get some inspiration on in grain cutting boards MTM wood on YouTube check out his channel it's fabulous um, but uh, do you guys have any questions get the man of dr. pepper thank you Leanne yes I'm yeah this tea is killing me uh, you know sweet tea is you know my second favorite to dr. pepper but it just doesn't have that punch <laughs> that brain stimulating punch all right um do you guys have any questions on cutting boards and the things you could do you you know you've got your cheese boards you've got your uh cutting boards with the handles your pizza not not the pizza platter that i'm about to show you but the um uh uh pizza oven boards right or the boards that you would use like almost like a pizza oven but smaller scale for your stove and things um You've got your full-size cutting boards, whether they be face plane or you know face uh, grain or in grain. So many different variables and things uh, uh, that you can do um, with these and, and create different designs and all. The inlay process, the V-carve inlay process, start depth zero, cut depth of 0.2 for the female cut. For the male, make sure that design is beard and make sure there's a boundary around it. And it's a start depth of 0.1 and a cut depth of 0.1. Those numbers don't change unless they only change unless you want some, you know, a little bit deeper cut for whatever purposes. Uh, but I'm just giving you some tried and true, true, tried and true, true and tried, whatever. Yes, uh, you know, cuts, you know, that have been very satisfactory. Uh, the end result has been phenomenal. For me but definitely check out that PDF uh, it's called vcarve inlay project if you type that in Google uh, you will find a uh, the PDF uh, download uh, by Paul Zank and Damian Durant which is a step-by-step -step in the vcarve inlay process and uh, you'll notice in theirs they cut theirs to a depth of cut of 0.3 for their female uh, there um, they are using a 90 degree v-bit um, 
and uh, their start depth is 0.1 and their flat depth is 0.2 on their mail uh, which equals to that 0.3 so you'll notice that they have a the different depth in the you know uh, what I just taught you here that's going to be the only deviation but if you guys have no questions on this I want to get onto this pizza platter uh, and then we'll talk about uh, we'll finish up with a small little trivet but the pizza platter is going to take a moment to uh, create now this pizza platter is by no means uh, my designer idea uh, I have uh, seen it uh, you know you can you can find them on interest you know images of them and stuff uh, a lot of different styles and, and ways to create them but boy oh boy are they just uh, they're good for especially now if you're ordering a Papa John pizza I don't know how well they go because it all depends on how that pizza was cut for the slices but if you're into making your homemade pizza and you want to serve your homemade pizza in style this is the way to go all right so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change our board size for this uh, and I am going to delete I can recreate any of these uh, tool paths if we need to but I am going to delete uh, all, all the tool paths. So let me see if I can right click, delete all. Because I want a clean slate when talking about this pizza platter. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is look at our job size. Now, a typical diameter for a large pizza is around 14 inches. Uh, a typical diameter for an extra large is around 16 inches. Medium would be probably around 10 inches, uh, 10 to 12, depending on you know uh, you know what you would consider you know medium, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Well, I'm going to work with a large uh, kind of pizza, 14 inch diameter pizza. So uh, with that, for that, I'm going to uh, have a board that is uh, we'll go 18 inches by 18 inches. I want this to be able to be cut out. Uh, on a mini carver or a big carver so we're gonna go 18 by 18 and it's gonna be three quarters of an inch okay um, ba -da -ba -ba. we're gonna start off and touching off on our material surface and we're gonna start off in the center now first thing I'm gonna do is open up my circle tool here and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna hold down my mouse while I'm drawing and I'm gonna type in 14 D for diameter Woo! there's all my layers uh, popping up let's go ahead and uh, undo that I deleted my uh, tool pass but I forgot to delete the now I'm not gonna delete my layers because I need them to recreate these later for you when I create the individual files so I'm gonna add a new layer and call this my pizza platter base and we're going to create a new layer and call it our pizza platter pizza that's amore or right, pizza platter slices all right <laughs> So we'll start off with our pizza platter base. Make that an active layer to be drawing in, ladies and gentlemen. That's what the uh, the big issue is. Is um, you know I'm, I don't have the right layer active. So we're gonna go with a 14 inch D for diameter uh, pizza, pizza, pizza. Now that's gonna be our pizza diameter. We need the pizza to be able to fit in the platter. <laughs> so we're gonna offset that outward. Uh, by you know we want to give ourselves some room you know again we don't want a friction fit uh, so I'll probably go a quarter inch all the way around and uh, could probably you know just in case I'm not perfectly good at making a 14 inch dough you know and it might be a little bit bigger than 14 inch I should probably go about a half inch but we'll stick with a quarter inch offset uh, uh, yeah, we'll stick with a quarter inch offset. All right. And um, I'm going to be under the assumption that I'm so good <laughs> that when I finish making my pizza, it's going to be perfectly 14 inches in diameter, which is hard to gauge. Uh, you might want to make your dough a little smaller. All right. So um, 
uh, or use a pizza pan. All right, so I've got that offset there. Now, this is gonna be the inside pocket of my platter. This is gonna be my pizza. I am going to uh, put this on a separate layer. I'm gonna call this layer pizza. And I'm gonna make this layer red, okay? So that way you know that red line is the pizza. <laughs> All right, now, uh, this platter, is going to have a three eighths of an inch lip. So I'm gonna offset this circle outward, outward, three eighths of an inch. Okay. And I want to, uh, I want to divide my pizza up into six slices. So I'm gonna draw a straight line down my center point here, from center to center. And I'm gonna go into my circular array tool. My circular array tool. And I'm rotating around my center, zero, zero. Okay? And so I want to rotate six times around. Okay? Six. And 360 degrees total. Okay? So now, this is going to be, I'm going to move that to my pizza layer, and I'm going to turn off my other layers except for my pizza. I'm going to make it active because I want to come in here and I'm going to trim away all this overlap. I got to first ungroup it. Ungroup it. Dagummit. Dagummit. My offsets, they're on the wrong layer. Those are gonna be my pizza platter. Move to the pizza platter base layer. All right, let me turn that off. Okay, so now I can ungroup this. What are you doing, guys? What are you doing? move this to the pizza layer. Move these two to the pizza platter layer. They're on the pizza platter layer. Turn that layer off. Make this layer active. Don't you group together. Tell you what. I'm gonna delete those because they're driving me nuts by doing that. It's gonna do it again. I'm gonna draw another line from here to here. I'm gonna rotate that line with the circular array around my center point of zero, zero, six times. There we go. Okay, so this is gonna be my pizza. <laughs> All right, let's go back to our pizza base. Now, on this pizza base, <clears throat> I need some openings cut for the handles of these slices. This will make sense in a minute. So what I need to do is, uh, on here, I need to draw a rectangle. And this rectangle is going to be about an inch to an inch and a quarter wide. I'm gonna start off with an inch, uh, cause that's a good, uh, that's a good decent size handle. Um, so I'm gonna start off with an inch and, and we can look at how, if it's too skinny, we'll make it bigger, what have you. But I want this to be uh, a ha um, half inch wide. Now uh, let's go three quarter. <clears throat> and I want this rectangle to be centered, perfectly centered on my zero line, but in the middle of these two. So I'm gonna take this outside lip and let me turn the pizza off so it's not confusing you. Oh, you son of a gun. Make sure, <laughs> that red should have been a, a red flag, right? Uh, let's move this over to the uh, pizza platter base. Jeez Louise. 
Okay, let's work in the pizza platter base. I want to create an offset of this uh, inner perimeter here of my base. And I want to offset it inward an eighth of an inch or a, a three sixteenths of an inch because I have that uh, three eighths of an inch lip, you know. So I want to offset it um, outward by half of that, 0.1875. And that's going to create this kind of middle line. And what that will let me do is that will give me a point to snap my rectangle to. And now on that rectangle, I want to copy that around. If I do it six times like I did uh, the um, the lines, well, they're gonna these these handle parts are gonna end up right there on the lines of my slices. I don't want to do that, so I need to rotate around twelve times. And then I need to come through and delete this one and this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. I should have six handles coming around. So now if I were to turn the pizza back on, you can kind of see that in the middle of my slices, I have this opening. Okay, so let's create some tool paths so you can see what we've what we've uh, what we've essentially ended up creating so far. Um, let's turn the pizza on and turn this on. <laughs> All right, so for my inside cut here, it's going to be a pocket tool path. My platter, my whole base piece of material is three quarters of an inch. I want to go down a quarter of an inch to um, uh, a half inch. I want to go down a half inch. I want to leave a quarter inch of material. So I want to go down, oops, sorry. Start depth of zero and I want to cut down to a half inch. And I want to calculate that tool path. So that way, what bit did I have on that? It surely wasn't an end mill. Stand by. That was the box core bit. I'm going to use a. This would be a great. This would be a great uh, bit for the um, bowl bit. You know, Dennis had mentioned earlier and things. But I'm going to just use my quarter inch end mill for this. And let's calculate that tool path and let's uh, cut that out. One more pass. Definitely need a Dr. Pepper. I'm making all kinds of mess ups tonight. All right. All right. So this is where the pizza is going to be sitting. Let's go ahead and Let's cut out the profile cut. Now, of course, on the profile cut, we would have tabs, but I'm going to not create the tabs so we can see this uh, piece cut out so you can kind of get the visualization. Uh, for this, we're going to cut through with our quarter inch end mill. And we're going to calculate this. For this, I probably would have a nice little round over on both edges, a little eighth inch round over uh, on uh, both edges of this, but we'll go ahead. So here's going to be our platter. Now, now we got to create our pocket cuts for the pizza slices. So this is going to be a pocket cut for these guys. Um, and these are going to cut a half inch deep as well, the same as the inside of our platter. Uh, same quarter inch end mill. We're going to calculate that tool path and we're going to preview that selected tool path. All right. So now, 
imagine that we have that. Okay. Now, the this is just the base. Okay. Now we're actually going to create individual wooden slices that have a handle that stick out beyond this base that our pizza slices would be set resting on and they're like individual serving trays little pizza slice shaped individual serving trays for the slices of pizza so what we're going to do now is this is the platter okay and so we're gonna go ahead and turn that off right turn that off we're gonna turn on our uh, pizza platter slice layer and we got our pizza that we're gonna turn on now the one thing I am gonna steal from this is this inside vector right here I'm gonna make a copy of that to that pizza slice layer right there that way when I do turn off this uh, platter base I have this outline here now <clears throat> On here I need to extend these lines I could very easily redraw the lines um, and uh, you know I could I very easily redraw the lines and just re-rotate them again but it's just as easy for me to take my extend tool and you know click on oh I got to ungroup these first it won't extend while they're grouped let me make sure my pizza slice pizza layer is active while I do this and let's see what pops up if it lets me ungroup these or not yes there we go alright now let's go back into here make this our active layer now if I extend these lines to here all the way around all I have to do is hover my mouse over you'll see this line shoot straight out if I left click that starts the line now I can move over to my boundary and left click again to finish it off so it's basically extending the vector so we left click and then left click extending the vector out to that point point. and one more okay now I'm going to um, on my pizza layer which is basically all of these uh, guys here and this uh, I'm going to copy this copy this to that platter slice layer and then I'm going to turn off my pizza layer hide that uh, because I'm going to end up, um, I'm going to end up uh, just. Oops. Bear with me a second. Let me select all of my lines here. All right, I had a couple of duplicates uh, on there. Uh, so what I did to get rid of those duplicates to show you what I did is uh, when I made that copy of those uh, lines, you can see duplicates because you can kind of, if you look at it, it's not a clear dotted line. You can see this black behind it. That means there's more than one line behind this vector. Uh, and But that one line is short okay you can see that black line stops here you see how this is just solid paint there's no little black dots in there so what I did was I selected all of my lines and I grouped them together so while they're grouped together I can deselect them here if I take and hold down my left mouse button and I drag from right to left it's gonna select all of the vectors and its duplicates and if I hold down the shift key and I select on the, one of these outside lines here then it only leaves my duplicate vectors selected those short ones and then I can hit my delete key and get rid of them 
that way now I have a nice clean solid pink and when I ungroup these I have these nice dotted lines with no duplicates behind them now another way to do that is to right click and go to selection select all duplicate vectors uh, if there were duplicates in there it would select them and then you could delete them out so whichever way you wanted to do it uh, you could do it okay if I undo what I just did and I put my duplicates back in there if I right click and go to selection select all duplicate vectors it will tell me that there's no duplicate vectors in there which is a fib um, oh there they wouldn't see they wouldn't technically be considered duplicates because these vectors are longer than the other ones so you have to do it the way that I did it you have to do it the way I did it uh, by grouping them together um, and then deselecting that group so you can delete them unfortunately because these lines were longer so <clears throat> that was a shame all right now on here uh, all of these individual lines I need to cut them I gotta cut my individual slices so I'm gonna go into node editing mode and on this line here I have two endpoints and I've got a midpoint which you can barely see uh, if I right click and cut the vector there it will create that midpoint right there and I need to do that for all of these I need to cut all of these vectors in the center these three lines and so by doing that I have these individual lines now all the way around and by the way my platter is set up for a six slice platter I like big slices you know you can divide this up as many ways as you want now I'm gonna take my scissor tools and I'm going to trim away this inner line which is represented my pizza outline right I'm gonna trim those away and I have these individual lines and this point you know I, I need to you know cut this vector because this is just a circle I gotta tie all this stuff together and so at this end point in node editing I can just move my mouse over this endpoint and cut the vector. Come over here to this endpoint, cut the vector. Come over here, cut the vector. You'll see new nodes pop up. as we create those cuts even though there's a node here it still needs to be cut because that node is actually part of the circle and we got one more alright so now I should have six different quarter moon shapes and so what I want to do is I need to join these three together but if I join those three together what happens to where where's this line what's gonna join with this slice right so I need to in this it would be a case where I do have duplicates alright so I am going to create duplicates on a few of these copy and paste um, so that way uh, it will you know I will have the appropriate number of lines because all these slices are going to get separated in just a moment. So on here, if I go into copy and paste, it's just going to paste a duplicate right on top of it. Uh, same thing here. I can go um, copy and paste. And now I can select, while it's still selected, hold down my shift key and grab this and this those three vectors and go into my join tool and I've got three open vectors when I join I will have one closed okay so I have one slice there 
Now, I want to come over here and copy and paste. Now, if I select this other vector that is hiding under here, Hold down my shift key and select on this vector and this vector and again join those together. And now I have my two slices. Okay. I can go ahead and start uh, moving them out a little bit so you can see the slices that are being created. So now next, I want to uh, come over here on this line and I need to copy and paste it. While it's selected, hold down my shift key and select this line here, that line there and join that together. So now I have my third slice. We're going to uh, take and close this tool for a moment, copy and paste. While it's selected, hold down the shift key and select on that and then join. Rinse and repeat, guys, rinse and repeat. Okay, I'm just gonna move that out so you can see it. One more time, copy and paste. Hold down the shift key. Join that together. And then finally, I do not need to copy and paste these last three. I just need to select them and join them. So now I have my individual slices. Now, Debbie Miller says, could you have created one slice and done an array? I love the way you guys think. I really, really do. That is absolutely yes. The answer to that is yes. So what Debbie is asking, I've got my, um, I've got my uh, slices here. Let me go ahead and uh, take this guy here and I'm gonna copy to a new layer and I'm just gonna call this layer slice array and I'm gonna turn this layer off come down to the slice array make it active and I'm going to uh, Delete all these. Now, I of course want to, you know, uh, make one slice to the size that when I end up with this, I end up with a 14 inch diameter pizza. But I could absolutely uh, create one slice and in that circular ar array tool, revolving around my zero, zero point, I could create six slices going 360 degrees to uh, finish those slices all the way around. Um, and uh, when I do that, you know, I would have my six individual slices, you know, and that's the wonderful thing about creating, you know, you guys doing your thinking and asking questions and stuff. That's an absolute uh, wonderful way to approach it, right? I mean, it accomplished the same goal in how many less steps, right? Well, however many steps it would take to create the slice and then just array it. So, absolutely wonderful. So, and we end up, there, there's more than one way to get from point A to point B, and this is just a second way, and it's a, it's a phenomenal way, you know? So, great question, uh, Debbie, and great thought process. Uh, it works good. Works works very well. So yes, that is one way, uh, probably the easier of the two, 
uh, to create your six slices. Uh, what you, the whole goal is in the end of the day is coming up with when these slices are put together, we have a 14 inch pizza. <laughs> All right, now <clears throat> these guys here, so let's, let me take and uh, undo, I want this to be back into a tight circle, so I'm gonna undo a couple of times. I'm gonna get back into my little circle point here. Look how well that pizza fits together. All right, okay. Now, with this, I'll leave this a layer active. We'll work in this layer for a moment. I wanna turn my platter base back on. And the edges of my platter base and the edges of my uh, pieces that's a pretty tight fit right you know there's 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 not a whole lot of room uh, for for things slipping in and stuff slipping in and out um, so we may want to offset our slices a little bit inward uh, but I don't want to do that right this second what I want it but what before I do that I want to take uh, these guys right here these vectors, these rectangular vectors, and I want to copy them to that slice array layer. And turn off my, he's like, that way I end up with this. Now, remember I said that these handles would be about one inch, uh, you know, uh, inch wide. Uh, inch and a quarter might probably be better, but uh, so far we'll see how it draws out. But on all of these guys right here, I'm going to go ahead at this point and I'm going to offset them inward just a small amount, uh, maybe a 32nd point. Uh, zero three one two five, and I want sharp corners when I offset inward. Don't ask me where those circles come from, but oh, they came in from. <clears throat> I've got to do one slice at a time. How silly is that? All right, offset inward. And let me look. Uh, will that fit down in there? Let's go a little bit. Let's let's be let's give ourselves uh, some fairness. Let's go a sixteenth of an inch. It's not going to kill us. There we go. Yeah, we'll go because we want to have a place for our knife to cut down in between and stuff. So a sixteenth of an inch. Um, but each of these are going to be cut down a sixteenth of an inch. So a sixteenth and a sixteenth is an eighth. That's an eighth inch separation. Uh, a little bit too wide. So I do want to go a thirty second because each of these are going to be a thirty second giving me that total of a uh, 16th of an inch. I'm so sorry guys to confuse you. I want my finished space offset for this to be an eighth, uh, 16th of an inch total. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing, every time I do one of these, that's, you know, 16th and 16th. Uh, on this, uh, in this case, I want to delete the original and offset, oops. Let's try 0.03125, not 3125. Offset that inward. Same thing with this. I'm just going to select all the way around. All the way around. There we go. So now we've got our individual slices. These rectangles are here to help me with my layout of my handle. Now I'm gonna do one, and like Debbie suggested, hey, let's do one and just array it around, right? 
So we're going to create one handle and we're going to array it around our center point uh, to make all the other handles. So for this, uh, I would like this handle um, to have a, what's a good overall length? Let's see here. My hand is about four inches wide. So let's go, let's do that. Let's go four, about four inches. What in the world is he doing? Um, if you wanted to make your life easier, I'm using my arrow keys, to, you know, to draw that handle out. Whoops! Oh gosh, don't do that. Want to make your life easier? Um, draw that uh, rectangle up here. Get on the straight and narrow, then we can move it around. Uh, this is one inch wide by three quarter inches thick. Okay, I want it to be four inches tall. Ooh, maybe not four inches tall. Maybe it's just gonna be a small handle. Let's go two inches tall. <clears throat> yeah it's gonna be two inches two inches two inches um, and then I'd like to have a little bit of a round knob at the end and this one inch wide is how wide my little openings are in my uh, cutout on my platter. Well, I want to create some room. Uh, I just want these to be able to fit nicely in there. So I want to go into node editing mode and I want to turn this into an arc. And I want to just ever so slightly curl that in. Now if I take this guy and <laughs> Okay. Um array him around. I'm going to ungroup him and I want to delete this one. I do 12 because it takes it to that uh, that center point um, where I need them to be. So I don't mind going through and deleting the ones that need to be deleted. Alright, so these guys, uh, you know, it will fit... Uh, just right and notice how everything is off to the left tisk tisk was I not centered this is very important very very important I am centered um, but I offset it I offset these guys inward a little bit so that kind of moves center off so if I was a little heavy on that side I need to be a little heavy on this side. So bear with me a second. Let me throw that off a little bit. All 
All right, now I'm going to array that around. And that should get me, oh, I was a little off. Undo, got to love the undo. Uh, if I go, oh, Stand tall, ladies and gentlemen, stand tall. <clears throat> okay, if this is centered, if I bump that over one bump and then array it around, make sure that you're rotating around your zero, zero point I'm anal, guys, so bear with me a second. I'm super anal about this. Um, I want to, if I'm still over heavy on that, that side, then I want to bump this over one full time, hold down my control key, and uh, two short bumps. Close enough. It's not quite, but... I was, I was, I was uh, one short bump from uh, being perfect, so I just backed it off. <laughs> Ta-da! Okay. I've, I'm super anal about that stuff. I apologize. Um, but uh, let's ungroup those. Uh, and um, because I offset all of these slices, that 30, you know, that third, thir 32nd of an inch, it threw off my center point. And so, therefore, I had to, before I could array this around, in order for me to land center on those pockets and everything, I had to make an adjustment on the original over to the right a little bit so that when it came around, it, um, you know, it fell center and it was just bugging me that it wasn't center. So I had to, sorry about that, I had to go through and I'm super. <laughs> Very little. Okay, so now I don't need my rectangles anymore. I can go through and get rid of them. They were just there for alignment purposes. Oops. And um, on these guys here, uh, I want to use, oops, one more rectangle we gotta get rid of. I'm going to use my weld tool um, and if I select all these, I should be able to select all these and weld them to create those individual pieces of slices. Okay. Those individual slices and things. Um, you know, a little handle, a little lifts and all. Now you could put circles in the middle of all these, uh, or what have you. Uh, so they can, uh, for whatever reason, hang up. I'm not sure what you would put a hole in there for. Uh, maybe a piece of leather strap, you know, to make them look fancy. I don't know. But what we need to do now is we got to be able to cut these out of our board. We'd like to be able to cut them out of the same board. So we need to kind of nest them so we can cut them. Uh, we need to rotate them or pos position them some way that we can cut them all out. Uh, but what I would like to... Um, do is get this somewhat uh, positioned properly and if I were to that's a sixteenth of an inch in there I'm going to be cutting these out using a quarter inch end mill, but for demonstration purposes, uh, the only two things these two handles are going to be cut off in this preview. But I want to uh, cut these um, uh, 
it's eluding me for a second. Where's my 16th inch end mill? Too many bits, too many bits, too many bits. There it is. <clears throat> uh, I want to be on uh, the outside of the line. Uh, three quarters of an inch thick. Now, by the way, these pizza slices here, uh, these platter slices, they would be cut out of half inch material. Okay? Half inch material. So, imagine you know you know my platter and stuff if I turn this off you know we have our platter uh, the individual slices you know they would fit in there and these handles would be sticking out look almost like a ship wheel and you can grab these handles and you can grab the individual slices right out and it's just a nice little serving tray for the pizza 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 uh, so if I were to preview um, this profile cut and of course uh, my 16th inch bits not going to fit in there so stand by a moment this again I for demonstration purposes you wouldn't cut this with a 32nd inch bit guys um, and you definitely wouldn't do it in one pass this toolpath is for demonstration, not for actual cutting. <laughs> so remember, my two handles are cut off because this fits, uh, you know, inside my board. But we have these individual slices and things uh, that would fit into our platter. You know, a nice serving. Now that pocket, that pocket in the uh, platter is a uh, half inch deep um, and so the uh, you want those pizza slices that you're going to be cutting you wanting them out of you know half inch material and me personally my outside of my platter would most likely be a walnut of some sort while the inside of my platter would be maple for a nice contrasting color or vice versa walnut slices with maple platter uh, I love you know just you know some kind of contrast of color uh, they could all be the same it doesn't matter it could all look the same and things um, but uh, some a very nice very nice single serve pizza serving platter uh, that can be customized to all different sizes so Uh, Debbie, I could have singled the selection, but uh, or centered the selection, but it was at an angle, uh, so it wouldn't have centered it uh, uh, in that fashion. Um, uh, it wouldn't have centered it, uh, it. It would have centered it, but not in in the position that I needed it. Uh, and uh, so, uh, and besides, those those uh, offsets were centered, um, but. Um, just not my just not my handle wasn't my handle wasn't because of that 30 second offset um, but yeah so you have this really nice platter it's made out of three quarter inch material uh, inside this platter your slices would be sitting you know uh, and then on, of course on top of that uh, you have your pizza sitting on top uh, and so that yeah, and it would be flat. It would be flush with those half-inch pieces in there. You know, the slices. You, your 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 serving tray would be flat. It'd be flush on the top, where your pizza sits. But you could take those individual slices out in their individual little serving trays. Um, anyhow, it's a really nice little project, and uh, we, in order to be able to maintain this, right, we got to cut these slices out. How would we cut these slices out of our 18 by 18 inch piece of material so that uh, you know uh, everything is fit? Well, we got to do a little bit of uh, moving around and stuff. And what I like to generally do is my nesting tool. If you don't have uh, uh, VCar Pro or Aspire, you don't have nesting. So 
uh, one thing that we can do is uh, do a little bit of a rotate on this you know so even rotating I'm still getting cut off on there you know on this size so I need to actually kind of reorganize my slices because I'm going to be using either an eighth inch or a quarter inch bit to cut them out um, and therefore I've got to kind of move them around and flip and mirror and, and do all kinds of funky things to get all six of these uh, parts to cut out and rotate and all that stuff so let's use the nesting tool and let's see what the nesting tool gives us uh, let's get this part from overlapping it might not even be possible to cut all the all six of these parts out of one 18 by 18 inch piece so we might have to cut them out of individual blocks which is easier for me I don't have to glue up an 18 by 18 inch panel I can cut these out of individual you know six by six uh, how tall are these things uh, eight by six you know I can cut them out of uh, you know individual eight by six boards right uh, but if we were cutting them out of one panel which would not that would be the more difficult way why am I showing you the difficult way uh, so I want uh, an eighth inch I'll use that I want a clearance in between these guys of about a quarter inch a piece uh, I don't mind that there you know I don't need any border gap we can rotate these things uh, any which way possible mirror to fit um, and let's preview and let's see what we get all right so one down all right let's see if we change our angle see if we go with a 45 degree rotation no nope. uh, let's go with an 80 degree rotation Nope. no matter what it's not with my gap of a quarter of an inch it's not gonna let me uh, uh, get that last piece in there uh, so uh, this is half inch material Still not going to do it for me. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So I knew there was going to be one way. I didn't think I was going to do it. I didn't think I was going to do it. All right. So uh, I'm using an eighth inch end mill to cut these out. Uh, I've got a space, a glap, a clearance of uh, 0.2. Uh, you know in between these um, I'm border gap zero so it can go right up to the edge and stuff I now that I have the general layout if I need to you know move things around and spread them out a little bit more I can um, you know if I want to just create a little bit more of a gap in between the parts uh, I can just by just kind of moving some things around and and uh, shifting them so my bit uh, can you know I can get good clearance and stuff between the parts now that I have the general way they're laid out you know uh, and once again with this it would be a profile cut I would be cutting uh, this out of half inch material uh, but since I am using three quarter inch in this uh, layout here, I will have to go three quarter inches of a deep. Uh, I'm going to be using my eighth inch end mill from a mana.
you know and then we can uh, stick them in the platter um, would it look better if the grain matched or is it uh, is that what you are, are going for so it you know uh, absolutely it would look better if the grain matched um, if uh, if I do it this way the grains gonna be in different patterns Howard uh, so um, it's it's if I wanted the the grain to match and have that you know that circular pattern when I put these pizza slices together in that circle that all the grain kind of comes together it's running one direction or the other um, you know that would be uh, something that you know I would have to figure out how I'm gonna cut those individual pieces so that the grain matches do I cut them out of a bigger piece 19 by 19 well now that eliminates if I have a mini carver I can't cut it out do I need to make my pizza tray smaller you know to um, instead of a large pizza at 14 inch diameter maybe a medium pizza at 10 inch diameter um, you know so there's some things I've got to work around uh, in order to cut them all out to where the grain is you know consecutively matching um, you know and also you know you got all the grain going in different directions and all depending on the wood and how sexy the grain is uh, you know a nice uh, tiger maple or or you know uh, uh, you know zebra wood or something uh, it might be cool to have uh, some contrasting grain directions and things you know uh, and stuff it all depends on your preference that's up to you guys I'm just giving you the tools and the ideas you guys cut it however you want to cut it so the way I just cut these slices up the grain would not match ladies and gentlemen when this was put into a circle the grain would not match uh, therefore if you want the grain to match when all these slices are put together and you want that grain pattern to be consistent which would probably be more pleasing to uh, you know people that are very OCD <laughs> that like everything's got to be perfect then uh, you know you um, then you've got to figure out uh, you know something's got to give the size of your handles the size of your overall project the size of your project board now this is an 18 inch by 18 inch piece you guys and girls that have the 2440 it's not a big deal for you uh, you know you've got uh, you know room to go bigger you can go up to 24 inches uh, for the mini carver this is the maximum cut so you guys are gonna have to figure it out um, you can and, and also uh, what you can do is let's imagine uh, that let, let me make this board actually bigger let me make this board uh, 20 by 20 okay now I've got to get this cut out of a 20 by 20 now right now I'm kind of rotated at an angle right I'm not up and down straight left and right and all that stuff but if I were if I were what would stop me and let me rotate this um, oops it. bear with me a second 20 by 20 all right let me rotate this off of zero zero or its center either one uh, let's rotate this ever so slightly
what would stop me from cutting this out of two individual 10 inch boards right cut these three out of one 10 inch board these three out of another now what the opportunity this opens up for me is if I have a nice let's say 10 inch uh, by one inch board or something uh, or maybe one and an eighth or what have you and I can have the ability to resaw and I've got a really sexy looking book match right when these two halves are together after it's resawed and they're folded down and I've got a pretty pretty book match BAM you know I can cut these out and everything and when these things come together that book match comes together uh, you know what I mean so you've got uh, you know that's one way you can do it um, of course now you would separate the pieces you wouldn't cut them like this this piece would be you know over here a little bit you got to separate so the router pit can get in between them right to cut them out got to give yourself you know uh, some room for that router bit to cut those parts out but why why couldn't you cut them out of two 10 inch pieces and then especially if you have a book match set of uh, you know whatever you know what I mean there you go uh, that kind of thing um, uh, tiling doesn't um, Howard for for tiling it doesn't help me because I'm still cutting them out of two 10 inch pieces I have to still I don't have a 20 inch uh, wide gantry space on a mini carver okay so I'm still breaking the board in half so there's no sense in tiling because I've got plenty of room this way to cut on my x-axis so I wouldn't have to tile anything um, uh, if I tiled it, I have to tile along the Y, which means cutting the board in half. So it's the, it's the same thing. Same thing. So tiling would be an unnecessary step. But think about that. Man, nice, nice piece of uh, uh, crotch walnut. Uh, nice book match for the individual trays, you know, and stuff. Uh, really oh yeah that would be hot be expensive I wouldn't sell that cheap but so got yourself a, a pizza tray guys and girls I want you to think about that and um, you know just uh, all kinds of possibilities all right, now the very last thing I want to talk to you guys about, just real quick, it's it's only a couple of minutes, uh, is uh, your trivets. Uh, now for this, I am going to go ahead and uh, save this uh, project as uh, uh, pizza platter cutting boards because I do have to break this up into individual projects for you guys and girls. But I want to save this because I want to actually, uh, for the trivets, I want to create an actual, the proper size. Uh, for this project, the trivets, they're going to be around six by six, um, three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, we're going to turn off all those tool paths. We're going to turn off all the layers. Okay, on this trivet, whether you make a round trivet, a square trivet, a trivet with decorative designs and things, this is going to be basically almost like a two-sided project. So we are going to go through and we are going to set this up as a two-sided job. Uh, trivets most are always two-sided jobs. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and click OK. <coughs> All right. For this, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle and I'm going to uh, draw it from corner to corner. Uh, on that rectangle that I just drew, I am going to end up offsetting it inward. Oh, a half inch. Go. And on that outside rectangle I'm gonna put a radius on the corners um, 
quarter inch radius. Whoops. I think it's a quarter inch radius. Let me see here. Uh, let's go with a half inch radius. Okay. Now, we're going to draw a single line. Uh, we're going to basically do a, a very simple grid, and then we're going to do another another style with some circles and things, but a uh, very simple grid, hatch, cross hatch pattern, trivet. Uh, we're going to take a straight line, and we're going to draw a line from corner to corner on the center of our trivet. We're going to go into the offset tool, and I want... I'm going to be using a quarter inch bit to be uh, cutting on these lines and everything. And when it's all said and done, I want a um, a kind of a quarter to a half inch grid in between. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go with a half inch offset. I'm going to start outward and I'm going to make sure that I have the select new selected so when I offset I'm just going to continue clicking offset okay uh, this one here I'll probably end up this one here I'll probably end up deleting I'm going to click back on that center line and this time I'm going to offset inward and again I'm going to continue and again I will delete that last line now I'm going to take these guys here and I'm going to uh, along with this vector here actually the everything all these vectors I'm going to copy to the other side okay now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my uh, individual vectors here so I'll go ahead and select these individual lines and then I'm going to select my rectangle last and I'm going to use the actual trim tool the trim tool uh, on the trim tool I want to clear everything outside of that boundary that boundary is the rectangle that I chose last I want to clear everything oops uh, it would help if I actually had it checked as I was talking about it clear outside that boundary okay that's going to create this pattern now this rectangle here uh, can get deleted. I don't need it there. Now I'm going to flip to the other side. These guys here. Let me see if I can uh, select them all. These guys here, they're going to get rotated uh 90 degrees and so i'm going to go into rotate off their center 90 degrees okay if you look closely you can see that cross hatch pattern you know from the vectors on the other side once again with this i'm going to have them selected select that boundary and i'm going to go into the trim tool and clear everything outside of that boundary again I do not need that rectangle I only have that rectangle there just for the purpose of my trimming now I'm going to do my profile cuts these profile cuts are going to be cutting halfway through my material 0.375 inches deep halfway through now you might even go 0.3755 if you were are unsure that your material is exactly three quarters of an inch thick um, but I'm gonna go 3 8 uh, the full 3 8 I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill for this and I'm gonna be cutting on the line and I'm going to calculate this toolpath okay I'm going to create that pattern. Okay, that grid pattern. Now, on the other side, those same vectors or the other side vectors, 
Again, I'm going to create another profile toolpath, cutting 3 eighths of an inch deep on the line. Calculate that toolpath. Preview that toolpath. Okay, that's going to create that crosshatch pattern for that trivet. And then finally, I'm going to do my profile cut. And I'd probably have this out of a little bit bigger board than the. I want my trivet being six by six when it's all said and done. I'd probably have you know a little bit wider board. You know, I got to have some room for clamping. But this is going to go three quarters of an inch thick, not 75 inches thick, three quarters of an inch thick. With my end mill, this time I'm going to be on the outside of the line and I'm going to calculate that toolpath. I'm going to preview that selected toolpath, and all that's going to do is round off my edges. Okay, this is a very plain, basic, simple trivet. Super simple. There's nothing extravagant about it. But what if we mixed it up? What if we had some. Uh, uh, tribal designs or, or Celtic knot designs or or what have you and so we're gonna look at that we're gonna look at that and see how we can uh, get that crosshatch pattern with some different circular type designs and things uh, but before we do before we do let's uh, look at uh, a couple of questions uh, if you did cut it from one piece then you always would be trying to put the slices, uh, the parts back in the same order before you put the pizza on it so the grain matches. Um, so yeah, William, but when, I, when I've got this thing stored away or got it on display, all, this, all the grain would be matching and all. Uh, when I have a pizza come over and I set it on it, it would already be there, you know, so. Uh, but yeah, I understand exactly what you're saying. Uh, do you cut the pizza on uh, the serving platter? Yes, you do, uh, Debbie. Uh, and that's what that spacing, that sixteenth of an inch spacing, uh, when you set that pizza on, you're actually cutting between those wooden slices with your uh, pizza cutter. Uh, and it creates uh, those nice slices right between you have that, those, that dividing line. So yes, you are cutting it on the platter. Um, uh, yes, the answer to that is yes. Uh, Leanne says, if you do, you need a space in the platter rim for the cutter to get to the edge of the pizza. And that brings up a very good point. Because the cutter's got it round, right? It's only going to get to one particular point. So... Um, we could create a groove in our platter uh, for where that pizza cutter would be going. You know, maybe an eighth inch little, uh, like a pocket cut or something that cuts down so it can get all the way to the edge. Or we could uh, uh, knife cut it. <laughs> I don't think of everything, guys. Uh, so we'd have to, you know, we'd have to figure that out. But yes, uh, but no, I you would use the, you would cut it on the, on the uh, the platter so it's cutting to those slices. Um, uh, but oh, I'm sorry, no, Leanne, uh, I'm an idiot. No, Leanne, the pizza cut. You don't need to make spaces in the platter uh, because when the when the when those wooden slices are in the platter. They are flush. It's 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 the flitch off the top. So the pizzas, there is no lip around it or anything like that. Um, they're they're flush. So the pizza sitting on top of this platter and those slices, it's right on top of the board. So you have there's you can cut all the way edge to edge. There's no interference. Um, there's no lip. There's no little wall around the pizza. So Leanne. Uh, you wouldn't need to put those slices in. You had me thinking there for a minute. Uh, David asked a question before about uh, what you would seal the wood with, Laney. Uh, good question. Let me go back up. I missed Dave Garbage Clayson question. Uh, so um, what I would recommend for sealing is a butcher block uh, seal. And bear with me a second. I'm going to pull that up here in a moment. 
butcher block wood sealer. You could use uh, uh, like a beeswax and mineral oil, uh, but um, I use uh, a food safe uh, wood sealer. And uh, if we go into images here, um, the Watco Butcher Block oil, you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, you have uh, the Bio Shield, uh, which is um, you know food safe as well. But uh, I, I use the Butcher Block, the Watco Butcher Block uh, salad bowl. Uh, let's see if I can enlarge the image so it's a uh, butcher block oil and finish it's a wipe on application safe for food contact multiple uses whether it be wood cutting boards butcher blocks salad bowls and more you know it's a food safe finish you know uh, so uh, Watco butcher block oil is what I finish with that's what all my cutting boards would be finished with uh, unless I just dip them in mineral oil and soak them for about an hour in mineral oil. Okay. All right. Uh, but there's a lot of food safe finishes, uh, safe coat, uh, bio shield, you know, and all that. But for me, my go to is Watco Butcher Block. All right. So. Um, that's where I would go. Yeah, no, Leanne, you had me thinking there. You got, yeah, you gave me on my toes. I'm thinking, wait a minute. Uh, I've never had that issue before. What, what, where was the pizza slicer going? And then I thought, no, wait a minute. The pizza's sitting on top of the platter. So, see, our platter is, the, the base of it is three quarters of an inch thick. And it's pocketed down a half inch. So when our half inch wooden slices fit into the tray, that tray is just there. The base is there to hold everything together, you know, my serving tray. Uh, and then those half inch pieces, uh, you know, those are individual servers, you know, you can hand out to people and stuff like that. But uh, when those uh, half inch, you know, slices are inside the base, uh, that half inch, you know, creates that level surface again. So there's no wall or lip around it uh, and everything and stuff. All right, last uh, one, guys. It's 10 o'clock. We're about to wrap it up. But uh, let's uh, take our trivet here. <clears throat> and okay, so let's start off with the top here. All right, so on this trivet, I'm going to uh, create a rectangle. Oops. Uh, and it's going to be offset again inward about a half an inch inward that way you know I have a lip you know I've got my lip and everything my border my frame whatever you want to call it from whatever's happening in here now I'm actually going to uh, utilize either my clip art tab um, weaves in here or I'm going to uh, utilize uh, a, a graphic a, a vector or whatever but first thing I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these uh, one of these rings here now this is a 3d model but I'm not using it for the 3d model I'm using it for the vectors I'm about to create off the 3d model so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this up and I'm going to size this down Hold down my shift key and size this down. And I'm going to get this in position. And um, I'm going to trace it.
and then I'm going to get rid of it and I'm going to take this tracing and I'm going to rotate it rotate it just like we've been doing other things I'm going to rotate it around my zero zero point four times And I'm going to take these four objects uh, that are get together and I'm going to weld them together. Oops. Um, I got to uh, ungroup them. There we go. And then uh, weld. Oops. That gum it. <laughs> I'm not going to weld them. I'm going to do some trimming. So bear with me a second while I do some trimming. Uh, for this, uh, pick a pick a pick a pick a pepper, any pepper. Stand by, I gotta repeat that process a couple of more times. Uh, this would be uh, this way and that would be that way one more time oh and one more time here and here uh, that's got to go away there and there and there. That one, that one, that one, and that one. Okay. So I've got my geometric design here. And uh, for this design, uh, it's a good size and everything. I don't need to really make it any bigger. Uh, I could... If I wanted to put something up in these corners, but we'll just leave this uh, as is. And uh, we're going to do our uh, pocket cut. Pocket cut uh, going 3 eighths of an inch deep. And the reason why I'm doing a pocket is I'm cutting in between the lines now uh, using a quarter inch end mill. Oh, I got open vectors. So somewhere my vectors did not close um, properly, and I bet you it's because I didn't have uh, um, I didn't have that tool selected properly when I was trimming. Let's go ahead and look at. Let's look at um, select all open vectors. Oh, is it selecting? No, it's not selecting vector from either side. Um, so it says I have four open vectors. So those vectors are most likely going to be overlaps, like this little guy right here, right? So there's four of them hiding around here, uh, all in the corners. And I could have just very easily just come in and deleted those uh, by selecting them and deleting them. But now I'm just going in individually. Now that I know where they're at, uh, it's gonna, they're all going to be in the same place because of the way the overlap was. So now I should have, uh, if I go to selection, select all open vectors, there should be um, none in the design. And if I look at this in my join tool, I should have 38 closed vectors, which is correct. Okay. So one more time, pocket cut, three eighths of an inch deep. Now, where are you? Come on now. I don't have four open vectors. Where are you at? Select all open vectors. I cannot see the open vectors that are selected, so I'm just going to right click and delete. I just told it to select them. 
so uh, they should be selected wherever they are so I'm just going to delete them because they have nothing to do with my design and so by doing that that should have gotten rid of them and I should have no more open vectors in my design okay um, so we're going to calculate that <laughs> what's all that about that's not what I want um, what that's telling me is that my eighth inch or my quarter inch bit is too big to fit in there uh, so I'm going to use a smaller end mill there we go that's mo better um, whenever you see uh, toolpath missing uh, it's not going to create the toolpath if it will not fit okay it will not create the toolpath for areas that that bit doesn't fit into all right not the sexiest looking design trip I would probably uh, do that a little bit different but let's go ahead and create the other side um, and on the other side we're going to utilize And I'm going to get this uh, size down. And I want to center it. But I want a little bit of an overlap on my corner right here. On that corner. Because I'm going to, once again, I'm going to trace this. And get rid of that model I don't need it in there and once again I'm going to rotate that around my zero zero point okay <clears throat> all right now I'm going to ungroup this I'm going to do this a little bit differently the way I trim the other one I'm actually going to grab all of my uh, boundaries, just the four boundaries here, and I'm going to um, end up welding them together. Let me see what happens there. Yep. Okay. And what that should do is that should get rid of all of my overlaps and everything for this design. Uh, just by selecting the boundaries because that's pretty much all that was overlapping and so now I can select all of these uh, I'll group them together so they're a little more solid uh, this one is going to be a pocket cut cutting through uh, I will be using an eighth inch material for this most definitely eighth inch not material but a uh, router bit uh, and I will calculate that and preview that selected toolpath And of course, these, you know, this, uh, uh, there's a lot of samples of trivets. This is not going to be a, a very nice looking one, I don't think. Uh, yeah. Uh, it definitely wouldn't be a nice looking one because guess what would happen? All of these pieces would fall out, right? <laughs> we don't want that to happen. Um, so we've got to come up with a pattern. Uh, that we can uh, you know duplicate or some way you know to cross so that we don't lose our 
center. <laughs> that would suck. Okay, that was a fail, guys. That's what you. That's what happens when you fail uh, on a drawing. So that was a bad, bad example. But uh, as a standalone, as a standalone trivet, if I offset this outward uh, an eighth of an inch. And I, instead of doing a pocket cut, I do a V carve. No flat depth. Okay. And then let's flip it over to the other side. And on this design, uh, just the outer perimeter if I offset this outer perimeter an eighth of an inch and I V carve this one And then I come in with my uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's create my radius my final profile cut oh I want to be on the outside of the line cutting all the way through three quarters of an inch uh, round that off there um, now the purpose of a trivet is airflow right uh, for cooling right now we have no airflow uh, you know um, through this part uh, there are you know there, there's there's nothing you know flowing and so if I come in uh, and and look, I'm I'm only getting you know in some places I'm cutting uh, through, in some places I'm not, uh, and stuff I'm not getting to that halfway mark uh, at least and stuff uh, to where I can, it's creating some kind of air vents and things. Um, we can you know uh, we need to work on the the design model in some way to uh, figure out how we could uh, you know create those through holes and stuff because this trivet would just be basically uh, it's not really it wouldn't be a trivet uh, because there's no airflow for cooling down those pots and pans and platters and plates and stuff um, but all in all you could create multiple patterns uh, as an example uh, just as an example to get your creative juices throwing um, bear with me one second and then we will be uh, done done take a look at some of the wonderful wonderful designs and things that people you know come up with for uh, trivets uh, just ingenious uh, creative um, here's one with circles and then on the other side it's straight lines so you can see that grid uh, you know between you know that's the same thing as the crosshatch pattern that we were doing but just a little bit uh, uh, more uh, unique it's just circles and squares uh, that way the center's not falling out it's not getting you know cut loose um, this is a trivet cutting board combination where it actually slides together to make a cutting board separates to create that air polo for trivet um, you know there's just all kinds of wonderful 
things and designs and stuff. Uh, get creative and, um, you know, uh, see what you can come up with. Uh, but be unique, you know, come up with your own designs and stuff. And uh, here's a, all right, so here's an example of the uh, almost like a puzzle trivet, right? It's a puzzle. But imagine this was like a little cheese serving tray where the individual little pieces came out for the, the hold the cheese. <laughs> um, you know, so um, just uh, some very unique designs. All my goal is here is for any of these, and by the way, if you guys and girls have a spire, unfortunately if you have a spire, uh, you have, uh, for you guys and girls that have the aspire, you have the ability to do this weave, this weave look where it actually overlaps and underlaps. Okay? Um, you have this weave that you can do uh, in your tool pass. Uh, not your tool pass, but in your uh, modeling tools and stuff. So keep that in mind as well. But there's a lot of you know wonderful examples out there all my goal is is to give you guys some ideas uh of things you've probably already thought of you know how to make you might not know how to make uh but just things that you can sell that would be sellable uh this last example was a fell in two times uh, one it's not a trivet because there's no airflow uh, it's more like a coaster right now the way it's sitting uh, and number two, the first time I did it, it cut all the center out and all the pieces would have fell out on the table and everything. So uh, that was a fail. But I will create some uh, different designs and stuff uh, for you guys and girls and I will have in your finished files. But hopefully you kind of get the idea. Um, it's all about getting the idea and, and making sure that, uh, you know, just trying to. Uh, but the pizza platter, that's an awesome, it's, it's really can be a, a nice little piece, nice little centerpiece, table centerpiece and stuff. Uh, the uh, cutting boards with the platter uh, slot you know so your plates can fit up under it the plate uh, uh, pocket um, uh, your V carve inlays uh, you know juice screws and things like that uh, start kind of being creative and just uh, you know just come now just take it take these kind of uh, concepts and just make them whatever you want to make them um, all right Ronnie says, uh, uh, let's see here, Butch Buck Oil, uh, just keep me on your toes. Yes, what I was thinking. You could put a color backer board behind it. Yeah, um, you could. You could. You could, could. you could put a color backer board behind it uh, to give it a contrasting color and things. Uh, we could uh, have this, you know, cut out and things. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Peter says um oh gosh what if you made the design exactly the same on both sides um if we made the design exactly the same on both sides let's get rid of this one except for this <clears throat> all right if we take this design here and copy it to the other side We move to that other side. We would definitely have to rotate it because all we would be doing is again just cutting these uh, uh, parts out. Um, we're trying to cut halfway and halfway. Uh, if we if we just copy to the other side, it's basically just a pocket cut all the way through, right? So if we rotate this off of its center, you know, 45 degrees. What we can look for is our trouble areas. So let's uh, you know we can see those uh, pockets on the other side and things. And so we may be okay here by doing that. So let's find out. Let's take this and um, now the question is, do I want to use the outside vector or not? If it's cutting between the lines, yeah, I'll leave it in there. That offset that I created, that eighth inch offset, I'll leave that in there. Uh, so let's go pocket cut, uh, three eighths of an inch deep, eighth inch end mill, calculate this tool path. 
uh, reset this preview. Preview, I'm missing something. Uh, okay, it's only, it's not getting in between these two lines right here. And most likely because of these little notches right here. So let me just take this and uh, offset it out just a little bit more. I'm going to go maybe uh, another ten thousandths of an inch. Oops. 0 0.01. Uh, deleting the original. So delete the original. Offset that outward just a little bit. Uh, and now let's try that one more time. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Come on up. There we go. All right, let's uh, take a look at that. So now we've got a kind of got this uh, pattern here. Um, I'd probably V carve this too, uh, just to get that nice V shaped edge. I don't like the way the pocket cut looks, uh, just all nice and straight. So uh, now that we've cut through, I'll go back and V carve it. But let's do the other side. Let's see if the let's see if uh, this works, Peter. Um, uh, we got to offset this one outward that additional ten thousandths of an inch uh, deleting the original just to get that gap so that bit can get through there uh, let's take this here and pocket cut this that three-eighths of an inch deep calculate it let's see what parts uh, we lose if any Okay, so we're not losing any uh, pieces or parts there. No fallout, but I don't like the way that finish looks, so I am going to V carve it uh, just uh, as well. So I'm going to, while that's selected, I'm going to go into that V carve toolpath uh, and uh, just uh, basically want to kind of get a nice little V carve in there. And, oops. Oh, Let's flip back over to this side <clears throat> and uh, I don't think anything is going to be cutting uh, all the way through with that V carve so let's uh, preview it my biggest fear is if I V carve I don't want to uh, lose my uh, my look so let's uh let's undo that so that would be the v carve So the V car, all it's doing, it's not even getting into the edges where my bit is cutting. So I would need to um, start that, uh, get a start depth in there. Uh, I'm going to go um, 30 thousandths of an inch, 30 thousandths of an inch, 0 0.03. Uh, just to make that bit get down lower so it chamfers off those edges and that's all I'm looking for is just a nice little chamfered edge um, let's go oh 
let's do it this way. Let's uh, change our V bit from the 60 to the 90 degree. 90 degree. And uh, that's what I needed was the 90 degree. Um, and now let's flip this over and uh, do the same thing with this. We're going to V carve that side as well. Uh, I'm going to use a 90 degree V bit with a 30 thousandths of an inch start depth. And all I'm doing is this. I just don't like the straight pocket look. I like to have that nice chamfered edge. Uh, and um, so And my goal is as long as I'm not cutting too deep, which I'm not, I can see that clearly in here. You know, uh, we're just getting that chamfer and everything is still connected. Uh, not the prettiest looking design and what's, what's screwing it up is these little jog out here. So I'd probably go through and delete them and smooth them out. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things screwing it up, but that jog is really just ugly. Uh, and and everything but by rotating this for you know making a copy to the other side rotating it I'm still secure there are no parts falling out no pieces uh, dropping off and uh, you know I've got that airflow but again the design just doesn't look very appealing um, but Peter uh, that answers your question and what if you did the exact same design on the other side now what I did like what I really did like um, was the uh, that picture that we saw where if we have a line here let's offset that uh, half inch outward and then select that center again and that half inch inward. And then on the other side, that. Now if I throw this into uh, transform mode by double clicking on it, if I hold my shift and control key, I can keep things centered uh, and um, you know I can just start drawing out you know these circles now if I want I'm just just kind of freehand drawing it now if I wanted it to be a certain distance like I wanted my lines then you know I could uh, ultimately uh, offset it at that certain distance but I'm just freehand pulling it out pulling it out pulling out to what looks you know you know uh, decent and um, I really like this design this is uh, again I would be using uh, cutting three eighths of an inch deep this time I would be using a quarter inch end mill um, for this and uh, we'd be calculating that oops uh, it would help if you select all your vectors there uh, Haas before you um, calculate that and if I am I in a pocket I'm an idiot come on guys uh, profile toolpath not pocket profile toolpath because I'm following the line anytime you're following the line a profile toolpath I want to be on the line not a pocket don't listen to what I do all right so let's preview that selected toolpath oops <laughs> stop that stop that all right reset the preview there you go. Now let's preview that selected tool bath. We got to go. It's 1041. Um, all right. That's side one. Uh, flip this over on our vectors here. Uh, we're going to do a profile tool path. Uh, three eighths of an inch deep on the line. Calculate that tool path. Preview that selected toolpath. <clears throat> All 
all right that way we have that you know almost like stove burner uh, grid look you know it's almost like a stove burner kind of thing uh, spiral uh, it's kind of neat you know so uh, that's an option right you got that nice airflow and everything got that stove burner look all right ladies and gentlemen I want to thank you very much for taking the time uh, uh, for watching this and hopefully it's kind of uh, giving you some ideas I know these are you know just simple things but um, these simple things can be turned into uh, quick easy to make inventory items that can be sold money in items uh, whether you sell them at the markets whether you sell them on your website whether you sell them you know on Facebook uh, you know they also make great holiday and gifts and all that but we're looking at items things that people would want in their home uh, we're, we're kind of decorating the kitchen with some you know uh, accents uh, next week we're actually gonna be making a very nice uh, bread box with a uh, uh, nice uh, door and everything um, and uh, something else we'll figure out what the other thing is but uh, uh, one, one, we're gonna have a four series so we're in part two of uh, four parts for the uh, country kitchen and then we're gonna move on to bigger and better things but uh, you know cutting boards trivets uh, the pizza platter gotta love it um, heck you could even do it on a smaller scale for a little cheese platter right serve a little cheese platter uh, little grapes little cheese all that stuff um, you know and then last week we did the different paper towel holders so all of these little things just make accessories and stuff to sell uh, and uh, hopefully you know like I said you, these, you might find these classes boring you might find the subject or the actual project look like junk and like no I would never make that kind of thing and it's not a matter of that you know I might screw up from time to time or we might not make something that looks good but take the concepts and use the fundamentals and, and apply it to your own design. I'm just trying to teach you some ways to approach things and stuff. And I probably confuse you more than teach you sometimes. <laughs> Wait till my book comes out. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. You have a great night. And uh, sorry to keep you so late this evening. All right. Bye, guys.